Okay, hello. Uh, so just to repeat myself before I actually begin, uh, we'll be using your phones uh, in the next hour or so for some of these hands-on experience. So if you have your phones, uh, please use your Wi-Fi instead of your data and log on to uh, Wireless and SG. So Wireless and SG is usually very good at the libraries. So try to lock that on and get out first. Okay. If you're first time, then you need to send a request for password and stuff like that. <clears throat> okay, come on in. There's uh, more seats on the my right or your left, and there's some more like uh, uh, tables there. You can come on in so that you can get more. I would like. All right. Um, this is going to be quite a lot along the way because it is relatively a new and emerging tech. So if you have questions, right, please don't wait till the end. Just raise your hand and then we can actually answer them. Questions also help others who may be wanting to ask, but you know they might not want to ask or they want to ask at the end. So please feel free to just raise your hand, okay? But based on the number, we can make this quite interactive so it doesn't have to be very formalized like a lecture style. Okay? Here we go. Uh, so I do this for all my talks. Uh, I don't believe in keeping the talk here. I believe in carrying the conversation online. So if you are an avid Twitter fan or you are very good with social media, uh, please tweet the hashtag. Uh, you don't have to tweet my name as the hashtag, you can tweet the first. Uh, and of course, uh, connect with me. So those two are my profiles on social media. You can look me up. Okay, I am very interested to see the conversations that go after the talk. So in the previous ones, when I go to Twitter, a lot of people were interested about how to really get started or which direction to specialize in, so to speak. Okay, so for today's talk, we can try to use this as an idea about where the conversation can continue after the talk. Right. So let me do a very short one. So who am I? My name is Vino. Uh, I come from a content and media background. So I've been doing the stuff that you see on TV since 1996. I'm a lot older than I look. Uh, so I've done the whole spectrum. I've gone like TV commercials, uh, TV programs, all the stuff that you cringe at, I might have done it, or I might be part of it. All the stuff that you like, maybe I have done it as well. Um, I've done corporate videos, instructional videos. I also went into theater, into web, into mobile filmmaking. So I kind of like did almost everything since 1995. Uh, so, I was personally challenged to ask myself, what is the next step? If we don't have the budgets to beat Hollywood and we're losing our local audience to Hollywood, Bollywood, Korean and Japanese, what can we do? Right? So, in uh, March of 2014, I stumbled, actually, you wouldn't uh, if you are uh, very using, uh, if you use the blue icon very much, right? You would have seen this quite prominently. So. I'm not a fan of Zuckerberg, but I found his post very intriguing. So he said a few things here, which I really encourage you to check it out. Uh, but above all the so-called uh, big proclamations about what he's going to do, he said a few things here which, which I stood up to so-called take, take attention to, right? Number one, um, oh, okay, it's kind of a little bit here. Uh, number one is he's trying to say that this is a new computing uh, communication platform. Okay, I think the last time we had a huge immersion of this was like uh, your WhatsApp or your online chat that you no longer have to use like data, uh, you no longer have to use your SMS or phone calls, right? Uh, it's one of the things that you can actually get an immersive experience. Uh, yes, as you can tell. Okay, and he actually professed that this is going to be sort of the future that's coming. Of course, these are very big words that somebody who is going to be saying this can use. But if I stuck around, or if you stuck around and you understand what he was trying to do, uh, you then realize that he's actually not the only one or company that is looking in this direction. So during this period of time where, you know, March, April, May, when I was really getting to understand what, is, what did he buy for $2 billion? What is the company that was building before he bought it called Oculus? And <clears throat> what did Google react to uh, when he did this? Right? So, if, I, if you think that one company is trying to 
advance their corporate or their business model or revenue. Why is another company also jumping on this technology, right? So Google released the Google Cardboard in uh, June 2014. Now this is in the same year, just barely a few months after Facebook acquired this. Okay, and for a company like Google to officially release something is probably meaning that they're probably going to consider something about this. So uh, we have the version 2 of the cardboard by a colleague who's going to bring it for you to show. But this is the version 1, right? Uh, which are more than welcome later on to come and take a look. So the version 1 is a collapsible put together cardboard, okay, which comes with two lenses and you can actually fold and put them together and you're supposed to put your phone in here so that you can close it and use it to watch content. Okay? Now, of course, some people will say, what's the difference if I just use my phone to watch content, right? Uh, but if you think about it a little bit deeper, you have two eyes, you use binoculars, cardboard has got two lenses, so it sort of works that way, okay? Uh, the lenses actually helps to create depth in your content as well. So, Today, we have a lot of advanced uh, development in this cardboard. There's plastic versions, there's big, big versions, and these come with very dedicated lenses to help you to see. It's a far enriching experience than using just a phone. Okay? I strongly encourage you to come and try this out, put your phone in here, and then take a look at it later. We also have the second version, which will help you to see the difference between what Google has done. So this is 2014, Google has rolled up a V2 version 2 in 2015, okay? And it is less cumbersome to assemble, it's all in a box. So we can show you that in a, in a little bit, okay? Uh, by this time, I was thinking to myself, okay, I, I think technology could be the differentiator, right? So if we are very, very uh, not attracted by local content that's for the latest celebrities or we really seen a lot of police dramas then maybe some form of technology would help us to sit up and appreciate maybe locally produced content so what i did is uh, i did soft the unthinkable to my family right so i went to apply for a master's program and the only place that professors to teach it is london so i actually went to find and write to uh, universities in the states okay uh, most of the reply came back to say, how can we teach you something that changes tomorrow? So we don't have anything official yet, and this is 2014, right? Uh, so I got basically a blank reply from there. Uh, even for this place in London, their reply is, we don't profess to teach you virtual reality, but we will help you get what you want to get to. So when I translated that, I found myself sitting among professors and everybody is looking at my project, trying to make it work. That's what they mean by help you, help you with your project. So the good thing is, I am free to propose what I want to do based on my research. The even better thing is, I can actually get all the professors with the academic minds to come and help do it. And a lot of them don't have this background because it's so new. Okay? So what I did there was a master's in this program uh, and they are quite, uh, what is the word to use, uh, forthcoming or, or emerging because other than AR and VR which I specialize in, they did IoT, uh, they did 3D printing, they did microelectronics, they did laser cutting, they did AR. So these are some of the modules which I actually uh, covered over the 15-16 months I was there. Uh, but because of my media background, I chose something that is more content related. Okay? We have actually specialists here who do some of the other technologies that you can talk about. Okay? So this is the point where I really want you to try to use your phone and see what I've done. So if you have successfully logged on to your Wi-Fi in your phone, let's take your phone and I'll explain this in a little bit. Okay? Fire the YouTube app or launch the YouTube app. You'll spend five minutes on this, no rush, okay? It's important that you actually use this to understand what we're going to be looking at and experience it for yourself. So launch the YouTube app and search for maybe the first two, right? Type in exactly the, these names into the YouTube app, right? 360 Test Shoot MDX Quad, 360 Test Shoot MDX Growth, okay? So I'll come around and help you to see whether you found it. 
uh, if you have a neighbor that doesn't have a phone, just feel free to come over and sit with them, okay? And then uh, see whether you can find it. Yep. Yep. Okay. If you found it, pick up your phone and then look around. Look around, okay? So you should do this. You should pull out your phone and then look around. Turn to your left, turn to your right. Pull it in a landscape mode. Pull it in a landscape mode. Look up, look down. Turn behind you. Turn behind you, no. Like physically sit on a chair, turn behind you. Okay? Can you find? Anybody? Okay, to use your data, switch out your Wi-Fi. You can see some of the videos that you saw enables you to look around the space which I shot it, right? So like the first one, you can see me, right? And then you can see the first floor and the roof and everything, okay? And if you see the second one, I'm actually outdoors, okay? And you can see also the first floor, the ground and everything. A few things to note about this is that your phone needs to be unlocked, right? So it can't be locked to the portrait mode, it can be land, must be landscape. Okay? And also the older models are not so friendly to using this because YouTube actually launched this feature only last year. Okay? So if you have a phone that is older than 2014, you might have some problems. <laughs> okay? So and they are counting on a come come on in the summer seat here. <clears throat> so you can actually experience the, the next few uh, in your own time if you like, okay? But what I've done is that uh, during that time that I was there, I actually shot a lot of these as tests. So if you go down the list, actually like for example, the third video, um, there were some errors in the stitch. And I'll explain to you what the stitch is. So when you turn around, you can see portions of the space which seems to cut the line through. And it's not like a complete 360. 
So these are the early tests which I conducted uh, regarding using a certain equipment to capture the 360. Now, if you think about it, the space that you are st sitting down right now is actually a 360. Okay, and you are very conscious of it because, I mean, you are here and you can also see everywhere around you. So the idea of the 360 from your phone when accompanied by a device is for you to see what somebody has captured. Okay, and this is for some of us who are completely new to this, this is a very new way of viewing content because we are so used to a flat screen and what the cameraman or the camera crew is forcing you to see. Right? So in the movies, if they capture a close-up of a cup, you can't see who's holding the cup, you are forced to see the cup. Okay? But in 360, you see everything. You see the cup, you see who's holding the cup, you see where is the person holding the cup, you see what's around the person holding the cup. Okay? So in terms of us viewing the content and the ones producing it, this is a whole new platform. Which is why when I come back to what he said uh, regarding the communication, this was quite interesting because now we are looking at a very different way of envisioning media. Right? It's no longer flat anymore. It's no longer traditional in a rectangular box. It's, if you want to choose to turn your phone to the left, you can do so. Okay, up and down, left and right. Okay? So what happens is the question about how did this happen? How did, was this captured? So this is captured uh, from this device. So this device actually originated in late 2014. Okay? Now for some of you who are GoPro fans or fans, uh, the GoPro is nothing new, right? It's been around for a long time. The recent ones, GoPro 4, is like very high quality and people strap it to their chest, uh, people put it on their helmets and then they go cycling, skating, diving and everything. But here's an unknown, unknown uh, fact that developed in 2014. Uh, somebody uh, built a rig that enabled six of these GoPros to be housed together. And the person who built this rig, an American, uh, basically measured the fact that the lens of the GoPros very nicely covers a different sphere of the 360 such that when you put it six together, you actually get a complete sphere. Okay? And not only that, they develop a software that helps you to stitch the six spheres together into the 360. Okay? So a little tidbit here, the company that started this is called Freedom360. You can look it up, freedom360.us. Okay? And they are sort of professing to be the forerunners in the 360 space. Yes? I think uh, Delta came up with, uh, with a similar project. Yeah, in 2015. Yeah. So, and, uh, and there are other cameras that rolled out after has got different versions of quality. So, for example, this rig here can very well fit a Hero 3, which doesn't go to like 4K if you are, uh, you know, video savvy. So, but you can use a 4, you can use a Hero 4 and then you can go to 4K. So, the good thing about the rig is that if you find similar size cameras with the same type of <coughs> lens, you can actually cover 360. So, and, and no, no uh, uh, sort of surprise here. A few months after this, right, then Xiaomi released a similar kind of GoPro looking camera that you can take out the GoPro and put in the Xiaomi camera and they will sort of do the same thing. Okay, but a different quality. Now. So for this US maker, uh, and you can see the, the thing here, they are, their revenue model is not in the rig. So the rig is, the rig is not expensive. Okay, the cameras alone cost about 600 Sing dollars. Six of them would be 3,000 Sing. The price is dropped now. The rig is about half of that. Okay? And the company knows that people can, I mean the USP or the unique selling position is not the rig. So what they do is, they put all the money into the software. So even if you shoot six cameras, how are you going to stitch them? Uh, so that's what they think they are going to earn, which they did. So they priced the software at 800 US, far above the rig. So that's how they earn. And uh, at that point in time, even up to late last year, there are only two companies that sell the stitching software. So you kind of like have to spend to, rig, to stitch them together. Okay? Uh, and more importantly, technically, if you are a camera head, then you will start to understand that I can't use like a traditional camera to point to something anymore. Because now I have six. So 
where is my subject going to be standing, what is the field of view, what is the depth, and so on and so forth. So this is completely a different sort of uh, uh, education, you know, called learning, in the capturing of TCC. Okay, and this is a preview of my stitching software for project that I was doing. So uh, here's an interesting tidbit, right? Uh, you import in the six shots or the six footage or the six cameras, and what the stitching software is they do is they try to identify time codes or they try to identify sound. So if I manage to have, let's say, the camera here with the six cameras, right? And before I start, I clap maybe. So what the stitching software does is that if you set to detect by sound, it will help to pick the clap and align the six footage together. So quite, quite nice. Huh? But having said that, if you set the camera out to the traffic, busy, noisy area, then you're in trouble. Okay? So some of the footage will not be aligned. So these are some of the things that you have to be aware when you're operating this. Okay? Uh, I guess what a lot of people who are interested in this when they started, they also don't realize one thing. Software is software, but for some of us who are very savvy software, it's also the hardware. So once people buy the software, they realize that their computers can't run it because they don't have a dedicated graphics card and so on and so forth. So be aware of such of these things. And these two stitching software, or these stitching software actually require minimal hardware requirements. Okay? Uh, no sooner that happened than this was announced, right? So this is not very late in the game. Right? This is like March 2015. Okay? Now, interestingly, uh, if you remember, uh, Facebook who did this and then YouTube who did this, right? When they first rolled it out, they rolled it out as a feature in their feed. But a lot of people didn't know about it and they couldn't understand it, right? So I remember last year when they rolled out, my friends were asking me, why my friend keep posting uh, videos on the floor? Because when you use Facebook, your phone is like this, right? Then you scroll your feed, right? You stalk somebody. I mean, I mean you check somebody's uh, feed, right? So they don't have this instruction to say, look, take the phone, look around, right? But interestingly, this feature of using the icon in the phone, which I, you, I'm sure all you saw now, just came out later on. So even for a tech giant like this, there are some learnings that they are picking up along the way. Okay? Uh, interestingly, YouTube does the same. Uh, now Facebook has got a little 360 circle in the middle as well to tell you that this is a 360 video. So these icons didn't actually exist when they first launched. Right? Uh, but I think more importantly, it means that we have a creative outlet for 360 content that if we want to do it. Okay, so in the past, right, you have a short film, you can go to the cinema, go to the library, go to festivals, and then you can say, right? So there's an outlet for people to see your work. Before this, there was no outlet, and then the ecosystem is incomplete. But if this is an outlet, it also means that this is a distribution, and this is a model that can actually send your work to see. So this is very, very important. Of course, Facebook then came out with it. Uh, by this time last year, I was trying to innovate a different idea to do 360. So I did all that test, there was half a dozen, a uh, little bit more over the half a dozen 360 videos. So I finished them and then I thought to myself, okay, so how do I now create something that's a bit more experiential, that's a bit more different? Uh, so if you look at the um, videos that I saw, i shown you before, uh, two of them are actually dance, okay? And I quite like it because number one, it is easier to excite dancers to do something. Okay? And at a time, I can go to the dance department, it's quite easy. Uh, number two, it's quite uh, interesting to get them to choreograph stuff. Because dancers don't like to work alone, but when you grip them together, then they start going with crazy ideas and all that. And then you show them examples of what I did, and then they went very exciting. Yes? <coughs> Are you able to do 360 live video? Nah. I'll, I'll come to that. Yeah, that's my... Yeah, I'll come to that. R raise it again because I'm going to talk about it. Okay? So, uh, because of the two dance, when I showed the dancers, uh, I got these dancers excited and we decided to do something a little bit crazy. So, what we did is we filmed 360 dance of the two dancers, let's say in this space, and then I stitched it together. And then, on a particular day, I opened the studio to the public, which is actually people in the university, to come in, take the phone on a tablet, stand in the center of the room, 
and then start the show. So what's the show? The show is when the lights came on, they were holding on to the tablet, which started playing, but they can also see the two same dancers in the 360 video in front of them. And there's a choreograph sequence whereby you have to decide whether you want to look at the tablet or the phone, or you want to look at actual dancers. So I was trying to put you, who is watching the 360 video, in the same space of what you're watching, and differentiating the experience around it. So, I mean, needless to say, I got a mixed bag of reviews. Some people say, I don't know where to look. Some people who can catch what they're doing realize there's a pattern. So if some of them realize that the choreography is such a way that if I look here, the dancer is in my screen, but the, in, real, in real life, the dancer is on the floor. When she stands up, go to the left, the phone will go to the right or something like that. So we purposely choreographed it such a way that there's some differentiation for you. So it's kind of like, imagine the 360 video you watch, if you are in, like for example, the school, like you're now in the school watching the video in the school. So that kind of differentiation is trying, something I'm trying to do. So this was quite unique because some of the festivals in London picked up the idea and wanted to do it for their arts festival. So in 2015, September, a dance group actually did this. So they did 360 within an actual live space. Uh, the good news is we have pushed where dance is going for them. For them. The bad news is, can anybody tell me the bad news? Or what's, what's not so good in this kind of uh, creative idea? Bandwidth. Huh? Bandwidth requirements. Huh? Bandwidth. Bandwidth, yeah. I mean physically, what do you think? So the dancers have to dance one dance every time one person in the room stands to watch the dance. So they can't do this for long, right? Because the actual dancers are physically performing to one single audience member holding up the tablet. So six of the six dance later they're like, okay? So unlike a dance on stage where you fill the hall with 100 people and they can perform one time, this is one person at a time. Okay? So this is not so good, but it means that there are a lot more possibilities to explore where 360 video can go. Okay? So I've been talking about 360 videos for the last like, 20 minutes, right? And uh, this like it seems to be like 360 video within a 360 space. So if you look at the topic that we're supposed to be coming in today, is we're talking about intro 360 and VR, right? So what's the difference between the two? Okay? So let me give you the immediate answer, okay? So the immediate answer is, go to your YouTube again, okay? Uh, for those who just got here, it helps if you launch, uh, if it helps if you connect to the wireless SG, so that you can use the Wi-Fi, and the experience is best served if your phone is no older than two years old, okay? And make sure that your screen is unlocked, so you can view it in the landscape mode. So can you launch your, we will spend the next five minutes on this and you, you let me tell you, it's very worth it. Okay? Can you launch your YouTube app and look for Time Couch by Stress Level Zero? Okay? And don't worry about the sound because this is our space. Just, just play it in full volume. Okay? So, Time Couch in, by Stress Level Zero. I'll come around and help you.
because we can't be looking at 360 the whole time which is why it's very encouraging to watch it again and this time to see who's chasing you or if you miss the box that you're crashing through then now you have a chance to catch it again okay what's better right is the fact that uh, this version that Duke has brought is the v2 i mentioned just now which is a vast improvement from v1 so it is a uh, Okay, so it's basically one that you open up and then it's got the flaps for you, you can turn it behind. Okay, and then put your phone in here and you can watch it. So if you look at some of the YouTube uh, screens that you are watching, at the bottom here there's a little icon of the cupboard icon. If you switch that, the screen splits into two, which helps to you to put it in here to watch it. It really helps with the lens because then you can see the depth of the visual. Okay, uh, Luther is selling the V2 for a very special price here. So, $12. Twelve dollars. Buy one. Uh, okay. I buy two. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, if you're not convinced, later on, come and put in your phone. Come and put in your phone, and then play Time Couch again and see the difference. Okay. Uh, some of these experiences are actually differentiated with something so simple. Okay. So try and try to pick this up later and take a look. Uh, but. I want to draw your attention to you know, my main heading, right? So I asked the question earlier, so what is the difference between 360 and VR? Now if you ask this question to gamers, they will tell you 360 is not VR. Because for gamers, VR only belongs to a world where they created everything within computer graphics, CG. Okay? If you ask people from our background, then we tell you if I create a content that I can pluck you from where you are and then you are immersively in another virtual reality, then that's VR, right? If I give you this, you put on your phone and for the next five minutes, I show you space or underwater, right? If I add in a dimension of narration where it, tell, where it tells you what you're watching, then it should take you away, right? Or as Time Couch has done, it has mixed animation with live action. So, Time Couch is interesting because they like to do this as their style. Who says that Time Couch is 100% animation? I won't ask the second question because it's a flying TV. So, Time Couch cannot be 100% live action. So, Time Couch is a mix of the two. So, the producers actually shot the background in an actual space 
but they animated some of those elements. So the boxes are obviously animated, the TV, the couch is obviously animated. So they blend the two together and suddenly we have a revised definition of what's VR. Okay? I like to think that VR is basically something that's beyond video. So if I put the dance in a space where you're appreciating it with live action, then technically that's virtually transporting you to another reality. Okay? If you're watching a video of somebody skating with the cardboard, then that's 360 video, I admit. Okay? But if we differentiate it slightly, then technically that could be virtual reality. Okay? So right now, if you go online and type difference between 360 and virtual reality, you have probably 20,000 different opinions or more. Tomorrow, you have another 10,000 more and it will keep growing. Okay? The fact is the industry is growing as fast as the opinion means that there's a good debate going on. Okay? But for me, it's like I, saw, I saw an opportunity that came about of how to push 360 video to another level. So I did the dance, I put the dancers in there, I created an experience. So what next? So um, in June uh, last year, uh, as part of SG50, STB was organizing organized uh, traveling festival. Right? It was called Singapore Inside Out and actually last December they came to Singapore and they set up at Bugis. Uh, Singapore Inside Out traveled three other cities, so Shanghai, London, New York. Okay, and of course because I was in London, I have to go there, I have to be there, right? So, and when I went there, I realized that it was actually very exciting because uh, it was a very big exhibition which they set up outdoors. It's got the best of theatre, best of dance, best of books, best of... It's got almost the best of almost all the local art scene. And it's moving, it's travelling, because of SG50. So my question is, wow, if I can shoot many 360 videos of this festival, that'd be cool. Uh, then I got to thinking about how do I... Because it's one festival, it's not like different festivals. I asked myself that, how do I make sure that it's one experience? Right? So... I wrote to them, I signed up as a volunteer, and then I went to shoot seven 360 videos. Okay? Now, if I have the seven 360 videos and I show you right now and say play the first video, then you play, then you watch, okay, good. <coughs> then I tell you play the second video, then you take out your phone, then you play it. It's not <laughs> it's not right. Right? Because if you go to the festival, you walk, you can actually cover all the grounds. It should be effortless, right? It should be when you put it on, you can navigate to all the exhibits you want. Uh, so with that in mind, I got thinking about how I can join them and collapse them together. Okay, so what I did is, I first designed uh, how to navigate them. So for example, my opening 360 is the outside of the festival, mm. right? So if I put an enter button there, and if you look at the enter button, then technically I, would, I should be able to bring you in. Okay? After I come in, then I should be able to give you an uh, option of where to go, which action to go. Okay? So I did that. And in fact, once I'm done, I even push to the extent of saying, if you look at the green dot, it should tell you who is the artist. So in this case, I should be able to see it, and then the artist and the name will show. That is sort of like the experience of bringing the festival to you. Okay, uh, so I went about doing that. Now at the time, this was in June 2015, right? Nobody has done this. Okay, I asked around, I put up questions online, like everywhere, right? So if you're tech, you know, right? I went to Stack Overflow, I went to GitHub, right? There. Okay, who has done interactivity within live action video for 360? <laughs> okay, yes. So you use the cellular reader on the phone to. to Select so that ah, good. I'll, I'll come to you. I'll come to this in a bit. So, how do I select this? Right? So, when I was researching, I didn't want people to take out the phone and then hit and then put it back in there, right? Because, I mean, that's, that's not good user experience. Mm. So, if you put the phone in for something like this, you must be able to select based on just looking. Okay? And the good thing is, I have to then go back to the gaming mentality, right? So, I used a game engine. Okay, now Game Engine has got a very big, this is one of the Game Engine. So Game Engine has got a lot of templates. And by now, uh, if you're a gamer, you have a lot of different functions or uh, users that have been out there doing this. So you tell them, I want to use my gaze to activate something. 
They really have many games like this. Okay? The difference is that the games that they create are CG. There's not live action. So I don't feel so bad because I'm not starting from scratch. Mm. So my question was how to combine this interactivity that is belonging to the computer graphics world into the live action video world. Okay? And that was the, the task that I embarked on. Okay? So a little bit technical here, but throughout that whole period, I had to research on how to import the video into a game engine and then put that interactivity there. Okay? So right now in my phone, I have the app that's completed that enables you to use this and then look at the interactivity and then draw it to the different worlds. And I took three months for that. Okay? And I graduated with distinction. Okay? But the thing is, this is not an elegant uh, uh, prototype or it's not an elegant uh, product. Why? Because the seven videos put together and exported as a mobile app came out to be 1.4 gig. Uh, which of you, who, are, who wants to download 1.4 gig into your phone? <laughs> <laughs> not possible, right? Okay. So right now, there is a lot of uh, different explorations about how to crunch it to make it smaller. And, and this is only seven videos. What if there's more? Okay? And if it's a festival, you can't be restricted by size to so just offer two scenes, for example, or two 360 videos. Okay? So this is one of the challenge facing uh, 360 producers who wants to push the envelope to do VR. Because each 360 video is actually very uh, big in size and file size. Okay? And also because of the quality. Uh, I, shot, I shot all of this in 4K. Okay, so each video alone really came out to be uh, nearly one gig. So to crunch seven and output as one app to just one point four is really a very, a very revealing achievement or some kind of thing I don't realize. Okay, so that's what I did using the game engine. Um, that is an interesting feature, and then I took it to uh, people and I showed them, hey, if you didn't go to the festival, now you can watch it as as a VR app on your phone. Okay, which brings me to the next point. Right? So I can completely introduce you to Singapore Inside Out for those of you who haven't gone, just by showing you a VR app. Now imagine the possibilities right now. Right? So if you haven't been to Singapore, Singaporeans very well travel, so I can't really name a place offhand. Let's say, let's say uh, Cape Town. Okay, maybe less people go, right? I could shoot various scenes in Cape Town and collapse them together and then or as opposed to showing you one video at a time for Cape Town. So immediately the instant application of VR is tourism, travel. Okay? And a lot of companies are actually embarking on this right now. Uh, more importantly is marketing promotions. Uh, so if you go to YouTube, this is not a 360 video, and you search Marriott Hotels Virtual Honeymoon. Okay? Marriott parked themselves outside uh, the registrar of marriage, they grab the couples and then they ask them to stand inside these booths. Okay, and then they put on, uh, at the time it's the Oculus DK1, so they put on the headset and then they ask them where do you want to go, right? So some people say uh, London, New York, and then they realize they'll be watching uh, in 360 the places which they choose to go. They put them in these booths also because there's a 4D element. So some of them has got like flying through the air and then the wind will blow and the water will come out okay, to enhance that. And then, of course, as the corporate video will go, they bring the couples out and how would you want to go now? And then the couples will say, yeah, sign now, buy the <laughs> You laugh at this, but there's companies in Singapore which are deploying this now. So it's not very far-fetched. Huh? So Flight Center has got VR solutions in their stores about destinations which you can go. And it's a very convincing tool for people right now because they can look around the actual places that they're reaching to. Okay? This is not very long ago. So when Game of Thrones relaunched their season, they set up at Ion and then they, they set up a booth similar to this and people can go in there and then they see themselves as part of the, the worlds. Okay? And all the Game of Thrones fans are crazy because they suddenly see all the worlds around them and it's the start of the new season. Okay? So I think in terms of marketing, promotions, advertising, hands down, this is a very cool new tool to actually exercise and use. Okay? Uh, I've spoken to agencies before and they're very excited about this because they want to find ways to engage the clients who are trying to reduce the advertising spend. 
So now it's like a new way to actually increase it. Okay? So the flight center one is someone I tell you about. Uh, you can look it up. So they have this in the flight center, and then they ask them where they want to go. They have a few headsets, they put it on, and you can travel. Okay? This is another application that is almost like a given, right? Hey, you want to buy a mansion? I can't take you there. You are somewhere, maybe in China. So I'll give you this, and then suddenly you can look at the living room. Then you look at the door, suddenly you go to the bedroom. Look at the door, suddenly you're in the garden. Okay? But this is not like animated rooms. These are actual rooms that they film in 360. Okay? It's transporting the potential customer to see what they buy. Right? Uh, for me, the biggest uh, application is uh, education. Um, so when Google launched the, the Cardboard V1, they launched a program for expeditions. Okay? And what they did is they took phones with the cardboard first to the poorest country like Ghana. Okay, the children there haven't seen a TV, TV set, let alone a TV program. But they've put up the content of Great Wall of China, New York City, and suddenly the kids are able to look around and see they actually are in these places. And then they conduct a program around it. So how far do you see the Great Wall? Who are the people you see around you? What is the texture of the floor? And, and, and things like that. So, Fast forward one year, education has gone so far ahead for them that they also have interactivity. Okay? So you can Google this, you can Google for this headline and you can see what they've been doing. So they've been adding interactivity into video and they can they can pop up narration in other information or they can drop down certain information of what you're looking at. Okay? Uh, I know particularly in the States they are trying to bring this to museums. Okay? Uh, for people who can't physically go to the museum, they can bring the museum to them. So these are some of the very up-and-coming, uh, interesting tidbits about the applications. Okay? Uh, of course, Singapore, I can't just watch all this happening without doing anything, right? So, uh, I went to do this. <laughs> so, so, during the Bukit Batok uh, by-elections, right? Uh, the, when they first announced the rallies, then I thought to myself, wow, oh, I have to go, right? Because uh, MediaCorp will just put the camera there and point to the speaker. And then they tell you, wow, a lot of supporters behind you. And then you cannot be sure. So I went there. <laughs> so I went there and then I put the camera there. And then I, kept, I captured 360. Okay? And then suddenly you're watching uh, Morali. But you turn around. You, you can now turn around. Okay? You turn around and see you only got two rows. Okay? So you are in a position to go and see how many supporters they have how many people are cheering and jeering. Because when you hear, you hear how many shouting, right? You can turn and see who's shouting, okay? But it also means one thing. No matter, no matter our friend here has got a soccer, full, soccer field full of supporters, also cannot win, okay? So, so the, the SDP rally is filled, you know, it's three times more people. And it was so filled that I can move my camera like from the, the beginning of the field all the way to the end to capture the extent of the supporters. And still eating it. Okay, so this yeah, these are some things of the new way of discovering live events. Question? No, I was just want I just wanted to share something. Yeah. Since you can now see the crowd, yeah. you can apply Google Cloud Vision API and to do crowd sentiment analysis. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can, you can. But you have to build it as a web, uh, mobile application or web application. Um no. Um you can do snapshots of oh. the crowd okay. and then submit it to API. It will come up with how many are happy, how many are sad. Interesting. And you can do a count based on that one. Okay, can you show me in a bit later? On? Okay, okay. Uh, because I uploaded it to YouTube. <coughs> so uh, if you want, you can actually copy this text down and search for it and then bring yourself back to the 29th of April. I think April, and then see the rally for yourself. Okay? Uh, best view with Wi Fi, okay? For obvious reasons. Okay? Uh, and then you can choose between the two rallies and see for yourself. Okay? I tried to get a snippet of it because it was a very long rally. So for the Chisun I managed to get his Tamil version, his Malay version, his Chinese version, and his English version. Okay? Which is quite interesting. Uh, and I brought it down to such a personal level that it is. Uh, almost head to head with the next guy. So you feel like you are among the supporters. So these are some of the things that you need to bear in mind when you're capturing 360. Okay? 
Uh, but due to the actual location itself, it was not very brightly lit, right? Some of the points were very dark, so the image quality is going to be reflective of that. Okay. Uh, this one here is brand new, so I worked with uh, National Gallery last weekend when they had an open house. So I did a very simple video, so they wanted to introduce people to the open house, but they also want to introduce them in a new way, right? So if you check out National Gallery, it was a very quick uh, collaboration. So we confirmed on Thursday and then Saturday I was there. Okay? So I put this up and then they credit me and then these are some of the things that uh, some of these uh, places are now looking into doing. Because you allow the viewer to look where they want to look. Okay? Second point to note uh, is that because you can often only look in one direction at one time, you often try to go back and see what you missed. Okay, so this is quite an interesting revelation in terms of the psyche of a 360. Because somebody will tell you, did you see the car fall over? Or cat fall over? Car fall over. Then you go, no I didn't, so you go back and see again. So there are some of these things that help to spur repeated viewing, and then the numbers will then go up and stuff. Okay, uh, so the point you raised just now was also, uh, so on April 2016, uh, YouTube released live, which you can plug in to do, and this is something cool. They also release a uh, special offer, <coughs> which means to say right now, if you have a stereo headphone and you have the right tools, you can actually hear sound coming from behind you, in front of you, left and right. Okay, this is quite cool. The only drawback is that uh, the equipment is not produced fast enough to Get this. I, I'm looking for it in Singapore, and Sennheiser only got one prototype which they haven't launched commercially. Okay, so this is quite interesting, especially for sound uh, audio files, right? So this is good. And then after you capture the sound, you need to go into the software, and then you need to throw the sound to the direction. So these are some things. To, so can you imagine I put this on now, and suddenly somebody calls me from behind? I can turn around and see who's calling me from behind. But you're not real. You're not. You're not in actual school. You're just hearing it. Okay, and it's not like you're buying a new set of headphones, you're using your normal stereo headphones. Okay? Uh, yeah, so as you can tell, I'm, I'm like bursting your excitement about this because number one, uh, in the media and content industry, we, we I say we because I, 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 like I was in the media and content industry, we had a major setback about five years ago because at the time, uh, 3D TV came out and then you have to buy 3D glasses. And then all the producers are saying, wow, this is great, so they go and produce 3D content. Not realizing that it's very expensive to produce, and the content didn't rise up to the demand. So people bought the 3D TV at home and the 3D glasses, then after three, after three movies, they have nothing to watch again. Right? And then, what do I do now? So that industry dropped like crazy. Uh, this new industry doesn't require any of that. In fact, all the content I show you right now can be viewed from your phone. And some of us have more than one phone. Okay? What's better than that is that all we need to do is to get a $12 cardboard and you can enhance the experience. Okay? And don't blame me if you find yourself tonight holding on to that and watching until you don't end up sleep. Okay? <laughs> it's that interesting. Okay? Because people have used YouTube now to upload uh, mountain climbing, sea diving, travels, okay? And you get the fact that you can actually choose where you want to watch, okay? So this is very, very, for me, welcoming because I've been to a stage whereby people actually bought, uh, spent money to buy hardware and then that didn't come to anything, okay? Now we're talking about empowering anybody with a phone to do that, okay? But having said that, I have also reminded you about some of the technical drawbacks. So everybody here was encouraged to use Wi-Fi. If you have used the 4G outside the library and try to view those contents, the quality will drop or the buffering will come down. Okay? So this is one thing that I think we need to catch up. So the 360 actually sucks up a lot of data, especially when it's live. Okay? And then on the outside, is something that we need to so-called uh, put together to make sure that it's okay. I think that's why we're coming up with 5G. Okay? Uh, <coughs> I mean, I could literally send you and talk to you more about the applications because every day somebody is doing something new. 
right? And if you're really interested in this, when you Google it today, tomorrow will be different. Okay? And the last thing is the, the 360 and the VR applications, if you think about it, it almost applies to quite a lot, if I'm not saying uh, almost every industry. And personally for me, the last time some technology like this happened that is applicable to almost all industries is like your mobile apps. And are we using mobile apps today? Mm. We are all using mobile apps today. Okay? So I think something that is interesting because it, it actually can translate across many industries. So if you continue to look for applications of VR, uh, US hospitals are using this for bipolar patients. Patients who don't leave the room, suddenly five minutes a day are looking at gardens, looking at outdoors, they are making the step to step out the corridor or step out the Okay? And so on and so forth. So there are a lot of these direct applications and it's not expensive. The content, depending on what you want to do, maybe cost a little bit, but the application is not expensive. Hospitals who can think about using this is just buying a cardboard or buying a Samsung Gear VR you know, it's a new bus. So some of these applications are not expensive. And the content that you can produce once can be repeatedly used for other patients. Also. So it's quite exciting that this is new and up and coming for all of us. So especially for some of us business owners, we can also think about how this is coming across to you. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Um, would you be covering recommended hardware and software to produce case uh, good question. So the question is, would I be recommending hardware and software to do J60? So right now, uh, there are a lot of companies that are actually producing their own uh, 360 camera. So last month, this is still June, right? So this month, Samsung released uh, Samsung 360. So it is like a $500 camera that allows you to shoot 360. So you download the app, use the app to switch on and record, and use the app to stop and record. But can you do live, like live to YouTube or live to Facebook video? Uh, I think Samsung 360 can. Yeah. But the thing about these cameras, right, is the fact that it auto stage for you. Yeah. So when you press record, the camera, which actually comes with 280 degree lens put together, it puts together uh, 102, 180 degree lens so that the middle, right, is often crossed up because of the lens. But because it's auto stage, right, Whatever you get is not reversible. So some of the, the experience that I can uh, just raise to you is if you shoot something with these cameras, if it doesn't stick, you can't go back and unstitch it. So the Samsung 360, when you press record, it goes direct to YouTube or Facebook no, video? It records as a media file. And so, then you take the media. Yeah, so you take the file, you connect to the computer, you can upload. Yeah, you can drag it out and then it exists as a media file. But what if we wanted something that's a live, like, you know, concert or a prepared speech? Yeah. So there are some of these cameras where you can plug in and then you can run their in-house application. So for example, Samsung application. And then connect it to YouTube and then do live. Yeah. So you've, you've done this with Samsung 360? I've done this with uh, another camera called the Theta. Yeah. So Theta has its own application. Yes. You run it on your laptop yes. and connect it to YouTube. And yes. So there's a drawback, right? I can beam live 360, but, but the person who's watching must also be in a Wi Fi environment because 4G yes. is slow. Yes. And then if I'm beaming live, like here, wireless and SG is not good enough. Mm. So I need a dedicated Wi Fi that none of you are using, but only I'm using. Yes. So the, the, the yeah. So there's two sides to the equation of life, which is the bandwidth needs to support. Yeah. But having said that, right? If uh, if I'm a conference speaker and I sell fifty dollar tickets to hundred people, and it's fully booked, I can now think about additional revenue from selling fifty percent a YouTube link that enables you to watch three sixty live. Exactly. At fifty percent. Yeah. Okay. And because it's conference, it's indoor, I can set up a Wi-Fi. It's very expensive to set up Wi-Fi. Uh, no, for, for a conference, if it's not live, you can just save on You can save it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, then, yeah but technically, like in a room, you ask Singtel to set up an internet connection here. It takes you about 2,000. How's the quality of the tech? Ah, okay. 
So the theater like you mentioned and the Samsung 360 and the Kodak 360, these are different cameras with different specifications. Okay, other than price point, there's also reviews, there's also tests that was done previously. So I advise you to go and look it up because people have got different uh, feedback of them. Uh, I personally like almost all of them, but I'm very careful about what they're being used for. So if I'm doing a client's job, then for example, I wouldn't use the all-in-one camera because if there's any stitching issue, then I can't adjust the stitch, right? And also the quality depends on what you're using. So the Samsung can go up to 4K. Yeah, but then the sound input online, the review saying it's not very good. So there are some of these things that you need to take note of. But for some of us who are very interested to get to shooting our own stuff in 360, then please go ahead. Okay? Is it available now, the Samsung 360? I, I think so. Yeah, it was launched at the last uh, computer show, what PC show. Yeah. So you can look into that. Uh, yeah. But I think before you do that, right, always, I mean, you guys know, right? Look for review and then see what the people say. So, like for example, uh, early this year when I did a review of the Kodak, the Kodak one is two separate cameras joined together by a ring a holder. So some people are saying that the the two cameras never always show the same lighting system or the lighting condition somehow. Okay, so I have to test it out myself. But these are some of the implications. Yeah, uh, to go into like professional to get a stitching software and all that is is a commercial and uh, is a commercial decision. But I strongly encourage you to think about shooting trees. Actually, Facebook has got 360 photos now on your Facebook. Yeah. So you want to start doing 360? You can actually take Facebook and just do photos first and see that whole space. The idea is to understand the 360 because uh, it's one thing to look in one direction. Now, if you're free to look in many directions. How do you control what people want to you know, show you what you want to see? Yeah. And any else? <coughs> I also want to stress uh, for those of us who maybe are not so interested in video, or maybe think 360 video is still if you're coming from a gamer's background. Uh, you can download Unity, and you know what? It's free. Okay, so Unity3D.com allows you to download game engines like Unity for free. And in the tab here, there is a option called Unity Asset Store. Okay, and the Asset Store whole is the Asset Store is like your App App Store, your Play Store. It has paid and it is free. And there's a lot of templates there that are free. Okay, so if you look for VR templates, there are actually free te templates there. Okay, which you can actually start building gaming VRs or game VRs straight away. Okay, uh, but you must be a little bit uh, software savvy. Lah. Okay, the things like apply and right click and all that. Okay, but the thing is, uh, Unity has got a lot of tutorials that help you. Okay, in fact, they are getting started with Unity. There's over like 30 tutorials that really have you. So this is a good direction to think about if you want to think about doing like uh, VR or CG level or gaming level. Are there any questions? If you want to ask me personally, you can come forward. I'm going to ask Tutor to bring out the rest of the V2. You can come check them out. Uh, get it from him. Okay, this is the test one. You can put your phone inside here and try. I'll help you. Okay. And then you can go back and watch, uh, you can come here and watch, uh, you can come here and go back to the time couch and try it again. But this time using this, you can also look at the difference between the two, V1 and V2. Okay, and then see what's the difference between the two. Okay, I have them here for you.